Daily news that's not from the government. Something most Burmese people have never had. The print run of this first edition is just 7,000. But it is another important step in this country's journey away from its military-ruled past. We want what we print to be good for the country, said publisher Uwin Tay. We no longer need to be afraid. In just two years, the changes have been startling. The fear has lifted. The range of opinions being expressed openly has expanded. Sometimes in Burma, you need to pinch yourself to be reminded of how new all of this is. But I can now walk down the street and choose from any number of different newspapers, some of which are quite critical of the government. Or, for example, I can pick a publication like this one, which is put out by Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy. It was her decision last year to join a political transition shaped by the military, which has convinced so many Burmese that these changes are for real. Her election to parliament was a pivotal moment. But she's a politician now, not an icon, confronting some messy challenges. The terrible sectarian violence, which has driven thousands, mainly Muslims, from their homes. And bitter disputes over land. Here at a controversial copper mine, Aung San Suu Kyi faced public anger over her recommendations, a new experience for her. She's getting more popular in the parliament than in public. For, for most of the public, they were quite confused. What's she doing now? She was our icon. She was the protester. What is she doing now? But then within the parliament, it looks like she's okay with the members of the party and she's okay with the USDP, the ruling party. Burma is unquestionably much freer today than most of its people expected. It's also a lot less predictable. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Rangoon.